so now we will discuss the concept of normal flora what are basically normal flora they are actually the bacteria and fungi so normal flora are bacteria and fungi that are permanent residents they are permanently part of some body parts like they are present on the skin they are present in oropharynx region they are present in colon and they may be even present in vagina so these are some common sites of normal flora where they are present and they have various important functions enabling the immune system to work and remember viruses and parasites not considered among the normal flora only bacteria and fungi are considered the part of normal flora viruses and parasites are not normal flora now normal flora are commensals what do you mean by commensals these are organisms which derive nutrition from the host but not harm them so they derive nutrition from the humans but also not harm them instead they have certain good functions now human microbiome is another term used for normal flora human microbiome is another word for normal flora so now what does the word carrier state mean the word carrier state mean an asymptomatic person or a person who recovered from an illness but he still carries the organism he harbors potential pathogen in a number that can be transmitted to others so a carrier person is himself asymptomatic but he have organism in amount that he is shedding and these can be transferred to the other people so this is what do you mean by carrier state and then there is important term colonization it refers to transiently acquiring a new organism transiently or for a long time you acquire a new organism and this organism may cause either the infectious disease in humans and can be transmitted to others also so that is colonization and remember they are not considered normal flora colonization means you acquire a new organism which can cause disease in you and can also be transferred to other organism this is a word colonization which are not normal flora so a new organism you get and that can be causing either infection or transfer to others that is colonization functions of normal flora so the normal flora have various functions like uh, they can cause diseases in immunocompromised people so in immunocompetent people they cannot cause disease only in people when they have disease or their immune system become compromised then normal flora can invade their immune system and then some of them usually cause disease when they leave their original site so in their normal anatomical sites like flora which are present in their original site of the skin and the intestine may not cause disease but when they leave their original site and migrate to other regions like into the blood then they can cause disease in other areas and they can also contribute to host defense how they contribute to host defense they can contribute by occupying the receptor sites they can occupy the receptor sites on the skin and on the mucosal surfaces in the colon intestine those regions and they can prevent the pathogens counterpart pathogens from invading so if the amount of these organism decrease in the skin and in the intestine then remember the counterpart pathogens may invade the immune system so this is also another way how they contribute to defense by occupying the receptor sites preventing the pathogens from attaching to those sites and then finally the functions of some intestinal flora also produce vitamins like vitamin b and vitamin k and their role can be seen in when you use excess antibiotics especially in malnourished people so the source of vitamins production by intestinal flora may decrease and vitamin deficiency can occur in such people because the excess antibiotics may decrease the normal flora of the intestine and the source of vitamins production that is vitamin b and k by the intestinal flora may decrease in malnourished people because they do not take enough vitamin sources from outside so this is how vitamin deficiency develop in those people but if you take good nutrition then excess antibiotic use may not cause vitamin deficiency in those people so that's just brief review of functions of flora now we will discuss the normal flora of the skin and uh, this include the predominantly fluorized staphylococcus epidermis which predominant in the skin staphylococcus epidermis and then there are less important organisms which include staphylococcus aureus candida albicans 
Carnibacterium, anaerobes like Propionobacterium, and uh, various Streptococcal species and Pseudomonas. The Streptococcus epidermis, when goes via skin into the blood, has important role in causing infection of prosthetic heart wall region and joints, prosthetic joints especially. And the less important organism like Staphylococcus aureus has a role in causing skin abscess. The Candida albicans, especially in IV drug abuser or through cannula, it can go into the blood. Candida albicans, which is a fungi, will cause disease only in immunocompromised people. So, in immunocompromised people, if it goes into the blood, especially in IV drug abuser, it will cause disease, systemic infections. And then we have corny bacterium which causes diphtheria and anaerobes like propionobacterium is responsible for pathogenesis of acnes, acnes on the skin and face region. And then we have other streptococcal species and pseudomonas, pseudomonas having specially role in UTI also. So that's uh, streptococcal also has role in various skin infections. So these are all the normal flora of the skin. Now important flora of the nose. Uh, we have uh, Staphylococcus aureus is the most predominant uh, flora of the nose. And less importantly we have other organism like Staphylococcus epidermis which is predominant in the skin but it is less important in nose. Cornibacterium and various streptococcal species can be present in nose. So the predominant flora of the nose is Staphylococcus aureus. And then in the mouth, we have uh, Streptococcus viridans is predominant in mouth. So the normal flora, Streptococcus viridans is the predominant. Whereas other Streptococcal species and Econola corodans is also present in the mouth but less important. And uh, this is especially important when causing soft tissue infection when you bite the other person by mouth. So the it is the Econola corodans which is responsible for causing soft tissue infection in those person's skin and then in the dental plaques pathogenesis the normal flora is a, a streptococcus mutans it has important role in the causing dental plaque or caries and then we have gingival cerevisis there is a low oxygen environment so anaerobes like bacteroids physiobacterium prevotella clostridium found in these sites because oxygen concentration is low in these sites and remember when these are aspirated uh, they can cause lung abscess also and uh, in the throat the normal flora uh, occupy the pharyngeal mucosal receptor sites and these important uh, organisms are streptococcus viridans streptococcus epidermis and nigeria species so these organism prevent their counterpart pathogens from attaching to these pharyngeal mucosal receptor site as we discussed in the function it is one of the way by which normal flora prevents the pathogens from attaching to these sites so the streptococcus viridans prevent the attachment of streptococcus pyogenes which is the counterpart organism streptococcus epidermis prevents the attachment of staphoreus to the receptor site on the pharynx and so on so this is how by occupying the receptor site these organisms prevent the potential pathogens from invading this site. Now in gastrointestinal tract, uh, remember in stomach we have the least organisms or normal flora because of the its acidic environment and low pH. But colon has the largest number of flora and uh, these normal flora basically include anaerobes and facultative organisms. So mostly we have anaerobes and facultative bacteria in the colon region. Among the anaerobes we have bacterioid fragilis being the most important and it's the most abundant organism in the colon and among facultative organism we have E. coli and Enterococcus faecalis. So these are facultative organism in the colon. Then uh, in vagina the important flora is lactobacillus predominates in the vagina. So predominantly we have lactobacillus and remember it keeps the pH low the lactobacillus keep the pH low and this is how it prevents the 
other organism from invading the vagina uh, which is usually the candidial becomes and in urethra the outer third predominantly contain staphylococcus epidermis so staphylococcus epidermis is the predominant organism of the urethra and uh, urethra can also be colonized colonized mean acquiring new organism with the fecal flora like e coli which is mainly present in the colonial region so the e coli can invade the urethral region also uh, by colonization and this can predispose to urinary tract infection so it is one of the most important organism in the pathogenesis of urinary tract infection so so we discuss the most most of the important normal flora in all the important regions in the oropharynx in the skin region in the throat in the nose in the gastrointestinal tract and so on